Cool. Um, welcome, everyone, to our workshop today. Um, the workshop today about building for UX, improving UX um, with some modules on the SDK. Um, we're going to talk about the message authorization module, X of Z, and also the fee grant, fee allowance module, uh, X fee grant. And uh, yeah, we're going to build what we call stash and controller accounts that we'll explain later down um, in, our, in our presentation, uh, which are all um, some, you, some, some tools to have a better UX for key management. Um, my name is Amori. I'm a software engineer at Region Network. Um, at Region, we're trying to be the, the home for the crypto-enabled movement for um, ecological and planetary regeneration. Um, at Region, we're actually also the core maintainers of the Cosmos SDK, and that's uh, how I spend most of my, my days working on improving the SDK itself. I uh, previously worked on Polkadot, and here on this slide, you can find my um, contacts if if um, if you want. And I'll be presenting today with Likita. Likita, would you like to present yourself? Yeah. So my name is Likita. I'm working at Witwit Technologies uh, since 2019, uh, where people are specialized in blockchain, uh, cloud services, and AI. So I have been a part of the uh, blockchain space since uh, 10 months. So I've been a part of the developing team of Cosmos SDK and Region Ledger since then. So. Yeah, that was a quick intro to, my, intro to myself. Yeah, you can take it from here, Amman. Thanks. Um, so today we will have a simple three-part presentation where the first part will be more theoretical. There will be some code snippets, but more or less an overview of what are the X uh, of the NXP grants modules. Um, the second part will talk about the stash and controller, which would be like an application of, um, of the two modules. And in the third part, we will show like a practical demo um, by screen share where we will create those uh, stash and controller accounts. Um, so with this, I'm going to dive in directly into the first part, X of Z and X fee grant. Um, so like if you started building on the Cosmos SDK, you might know that the SDK is um, separated into modules. Each module is like a small component with its its own defined um, state and spec and uh, test and queries and message um, so that um, you know like a, a blockchain application would be just a composition of uh, smaller modules in the SDK we have uh, the basic modules for building like generic blockchains we have like a bank module a staking module um, just distribution module for um, for, for delegation um, and rewards. We have we have those basic modules, and in the recent uh, SDK version of 04, So let's maybe start with the fee grants module. The fee grants module solves the problem um, that new users often don't have fee. Like onboarding experience uh, that that's smooth smooth enough. So um, like the first step to give some funds to new users, it, it's hard. Um, you know, like one idea would be to go to an exchange, like a centralized exchange, and to exchange fiat to crypto. But that um, involves a lot of process, like KYC. Um, and and there are other solutions, but overall, like fees are a high barrier to entry to to new users. And we're trying to um, yeah trying to solve solve this. Like some example of use case would be, yeah, like I'm, I'm, some other use case where like fees is relevant is for example, um, burner accounts where you want to have like a burner account for yourself. Um, that's also like kind of hard because you need to create one and send some fees to that account. And then you're gonna send some transaction with that account, but maybe there's too much fees. What do you do with the fees that are left in that burner account? Like it's quite hard to send them back. Um, and in the case of regen, we also have, um, 
like a use case for um, farmers and some IoT devices, which might sometimes need to send agricultural and ecological data, the ecological health or states um, of some of some piece of land um, to the blockchain. Um, and that's something we're building uh, on Regen. And so these um, these like say IoT devices would need to have. Um, or like these farmers, we need to have also some fees to pay for um, for their transactions. Um, so there are current solutions to this fee problem. Um, like one of them was the one I mentioned is to regularly fill the account with appropriate funds. But you know how much you fill, and how often, and and what you do with the rest. There are some chains that go with the zero fee model, um, no fees at all. And also in Ethereum, there's also um, this new meta meta transaction uh, feature, which allows users to pay fees with another, um, say, ERC20 token. These are some solutions, but the solutions we're going to present today, um, it's called XV Grant. It's a new module on, on the Cosmos SDK. Um, so the idea of the fee grant module is that there's um, a grantor who will have a lot of the funds will become like a fee pool, like a fee provider for um, all the like for some for some like you know authorized empty accounts like empty without any funds, so that these uh, these accounts with no funds, whenever they want to send a TX from themselves, they can pull the TX fees from uh, from a from the grantor. Um, concretely, on chain, it happens in two step. The first step would be that um, the grantor A will create. Um, a fee allowance from A to B, saying, "All right, I allow account B to use uh, fees on on my from my from my fund from my behalf." And step two, whenever B sends a TX, B needs to specify that uh, A is gonna pay for all the fees of the TX. Um, so, like, yeah, let's have a look at say step two, for example. First, like, you know, imagine uh, someone who doesn't have any funds who need to wants to send a message. Here, we're sending a message vote. Um, um, in our TX. So the grantee here says, I want to send a message vote, but I don't have any funds. Um, and what I do is that in the fee.grantor field inside the TX, I'll put the address of the grantor. And since like before the grantor already on chain has authorized the grantee to use the fees, um, then the grantee doesn't need to have any fees. And uh, yeah, so the grantee who can uh, is able to send a TX Without any fees, without any funds on on his account, mind blown. Um, so, how does the grantor allow the grantee to uh, use some fee uh, allowance? We have this fee allowance I interface that um, that that we introduce in the SDK. So, all fee allowance must like implement the following interface, which has two methods: validate basic. I'll start with this one because it's easier. It's just to make sure, like you know. The allowance that we allow have, let's say, a spend limit that's not negative, or you know, like an expiration date that's in the future, or um, some some like basic stuff. And the accept method is the one that's interesting. It's um, it's basically the the method that would say, given a TX with some fees and some message here in in the arguments, do we accept yes or no um, to pay for fees for for this um, for this TX? Do we accept that the grantor pay for um, the grantee's fees? Um, so this is an interface, and the reason we chose an interface is to allow um, a lot of uh, different fee allowances based on time, let's say expiration dates. But we can also have think of like a regular, you know, you can spend X tokens per month. You can spend X tokens, but you know, starting in in two years, you can start spending this token uh, as fees, etc. We can think of a lot of um, allowances. Here, I'm just gonna present one one allowance in the SDK, which is called the basic allowance. Um, and it's the most basic one where you, you can say that, yeah, you have a spend limit and an expiration. So the grantor allows the grantee to use up to the spend limit tokens for this given period of time. And after that, the allowance expires and, and that's all. So that's a basic one. Um, and um, I will show like, a, like the implementation of the fee allowance interface for the basic allowance. Um, to give you an idea how like how how this all fits in, if you ever you want to create your own um, fee allowances, so the ba basic allowance will have this accept method, and as I said, it takes the fee and the message um, um, parameters from the TX, and basically in the first if block we just check that the expiration didn't expire yet, um, and in the second block we check we check that the spend limit 
um, has not been, um, you know, surpassed yet. And uh, like, you know, after if 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 it's okay, then we just subtract subtract the fee from um, from the spend limit um, until it reaches zero or or less than zero. Um, so this is really an an easy, um, you know, an easy implementation. We can really imagine something more complicated, say based on some message. Like, you know, I only want to pay fees for those or those message for my grantees, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, like use your imagination to create new fee allowances. Um, so Likida will present the messages and the protocol queries about the grant. Yeah. So uh, before getting started with the fee grants, protobuf and protobuf messages and queries, let us know uh, what are the messages and queries in SDK. So uh, basically, messages are the objects uh, where um, we trigger the state transitions. So uh, they are wrapped in the transactions, and uh, we may have one or more messages there. So each transaction uh, relied under the uh, relied um, to the Cosmos SDK uh, will have to pass through the uh, base app. So base app will be routing all the messages um, extracted, and uh, it routes to the appropriate module. So each module, uh, sorry, uh, each module will uh, um, route it, routes to the uh, appropriate module, and uh, it processes to the uh, it processes uh, base uh, to the uh, right server. So it will be using message service uh, in each module, and uh, for the grants, uh, a gra for the queries. Uh, so a query is basically the request for the information uh, by the end users. So uh, we'll be uh, in the base app. We'll have a query router uh, which will route uh, all the queries uh, from the transaction, and it gives to the appropriate module and process through the message um, query service. So while getting onto the message grant allowance, so we'll be uh, having a, we'll be giving permission for the grant. So the grant can spend uh, up to the allowance or the the elements like fee grants uh, fee grant uh, allowed to the grantor allowed from the grantor to the grantee so we'll be having the fields of grantee grantor and the elements and coming on to message revoke elements uh, we'll be removing or detaching all the uh, existing elements or fee granted to the grantee uh, from the grantor account so we'll be having the grantee and grantor fields here so uh, next slide um, so query allowance. Uh, in query allowance, uh, we'll be querying for the list of allowances uh, given by the grantor um, to the grantee. So we'll have the fields of uh, grantor, grantee. Um, and coming on to query allowances, uh, it is the request type for the allowances RPC method. And here we'll uh, query for all the fee grants uh, given, uh, given to the grantee. So we'll only have the field of grantee here. So yeah, that was a quick description about protobuf messages and queries of fee grant. Thanks, Dita. <clears throat> um, cool. So let's move on to Aussie then in this case. Um, so fee grant was really about paying fees, right? For that the grantor to like for the grantee to pay fees if if new users don't have any fees. Aussie solves another problem. Um, it's um, to grant a sub account like a restricted set of powers from the from the root accounts. I gave here two use cases. Um, the first one would be like a um, company which would have a root account with, with supposedly a lot of funds. Um, and that company could grant, um, you know, like an authorization, like a restricted uh, authorization to use the money from, from, the, from, you know, from the company root account. And not only to pay fees, right, but also to pay actual, to send funds from, to, to you know buy stuff or other stuff. So like in this case, the root account would grant a, 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 like an authorization and RC authorization to some of the employees to perform some actions. Another one would be like um, if you have a multi-sig in which in some organization you have like a K out of N multi-sig um, to send funds or to do like important actions, but maybe like some of the you know some of the messages, some of the actions that this multi-sig um, does. Does, does not need to have all the member keys or like the K, the threshold member keys to sign. Um, so the multi-sig can decide to grant, let's say voting permission, like every time you send a message vote, um, this, this could be done with only one member key um, and not the threshold K uh, member keys. So these are some examples of use cases of um, yeah, the, the RFC 
um, that's trying to that RC is trying to solve. How it works concretely um, on chain is that the grantor will create an on chain uh, RC grant. So we will store the fact that you know grantor allows the sub account to use message vote or message send or some other stuff. And uh, the step two would be that whenever the sub account the grantee wants to execute, um, he can execute a nested a TX that we'll see in the next slide and under the grantor's name. And that the sub account doesn't need the root account's um, signature to actually send a message on behalf of the root account. So let's maybe have a look at this second point first, uh, more into details. Um, so here the grantee, the sub account, execute a, next, a nested message. So the, the top message, the real message, is the RC message exec um, to execute a message. And the message that's executed is message vote. And note how, like in the message exec, the, the like the the signer or like you know the creator of that message is the grantee. But for message vote, uh, the voter here is grantor. So here, like you know, we are saying that grantee has full power to use message votes on behalf of grantor. And also note that in the signature, we only need uh, the grantee signature. Um, and that's because, like you know, when we send this TX into the node, the node will see that there's like a relationship between grantor and grantee to use um, this message votes authorization, um, and that this transaction will be uh, fully allowed. Um, again, mind blown. So, how does this work concretely? Like, if you want to create yourself and integrate Offsy into your your chain, um, so the solution is that we will like the grantor or the root account will um, create allowances based on message types. You can only like the RC is um, yeah is, is modeled on the way that um, one account allows the other account to execute one type of message. In our previous example was message votes, um, but it can be you know message send or message delegate or, or any other message. And that's um, in the authorization interface that represents an authorization. That's what the message type URL um, represents. It's um, like concretely it will be like you know the the fully qualified Perlobaf name of the message, which, which looks like cosmos. Uh, let's say gov. B1 beta one. Message vote. Um, that will be what's returned here in the message type URL string. Um, it also has like very similar to fee grants. It also has the validate basic. Um, and again, like this is just to check some stateless uh, simple checks about the authorization. Um, you know, we can imagine like uh, also an expiration expiration date for for the authorization, and finally we have the accept method, um, which takes you know the message and ex and decides yes or no we are going to accept. Um, you know, the grantor is going to accept the grantee's message. Um, so this is like for exactly the same reason as this fee grant, we decided to use interfaces to allow for um, people in their own chain to be able to create their own kind of authorizations. In the SDK, we have like three, maybe like yeah, two or three authorizations that are hard coded. Um, we can show this one, the stake authorization. So the, the stake authorization, it's in the X staking um, module. The stake authorization says, says basically that the root account grants the sub account um, an authorization to perform either message delegate or message undelegate or message redelegate. Uh, it's also here in the enum. Um, and uh, there can be some other optional um, parameters in, in those messages that the sub account can or cannot do. For example, uh, we can set like a max number of tokens that the grant that the grantee can use um, to, to delegate on behalf of the grantor. We can also you know, decide that the root account only wants a, a certain list of validators to be um, to be delegated uh, to, or uh, on the contrary, like a deny list of uh, validators we don't want to delegate tokens to. Um, and yeah, and there's a, a validator and an authorization type, um, which is like an enum for the three messages. So this is like a basic, um, yeah, like a basic authorization from Aussie to decide whether or not someone can delegate. And we'll use this actually stake authorization later on in our uh, stash and controller demo. So um, that will be useful for, for later. Um, and um, like previously, Likita will present uh, the product messages and queries for the RC module. 
Yeah. So we'll be moving on to the product of messages and queries. Uh, so uh, firstly, message grant. So in message grant, we'll be uh, granting authorization uh, to the grantee. Uh, so we'll be giving authorizations like a send delegate, to delegate, or something like that uh, to the grantee uh, from the grantor. Uh, we can also provide the expiration time. So the uh, till the expiration time, the grantee can use the authorizations from the grant. So uh, we'll be having the grantor, grantee, and the allowance fields here. Uh, sorry, and the authorization type fields here. So the authorization types can be sent generic, uh, uh, redelegate, delegate, and something like that. And coming on to message exec, uh, in message execute, uh, we'll be uh, try to attempt the execution. Um, we'll be try to do the transactions uh, on behalf of the grantor. So uh, we need not expose our grantor key. Uh, and uh, we'll be using our grantee key here. So in message exec, we'll uh, we'll only have one message signer. So we need. Uh, so in Odyssey, we'll Odyssey will try to find the grants uh, matching uh, matching the message signers, uh, matching the message signers and the grantee and the message type URL. So we'll be having the fields of grantee, grantor, and the message type URLs here. And coming on to message revoke, uh, we'll be removing uh, all the authorizations. Uh, given to the grantor, uh, given from the grantor to the grantee. So it's just uh, removing the authorizations. So we'll be having the grantor and grantee fields here. And we can also provide the message type uh, so that we'll be removing only the uh, specified message type here. And while moving on to the queries, so uh, can you yeah. move this slide? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be having query grantor grants. Uh, in grantor grants, uh, we'll be uh, querying for the list of uh, grants uh, provided by the grantor. So we'll just have the grantor field. In query grants, uh, we'll be trying, uh, we'll be listing all the grants given by the grantor to the grantee. So it'll be grantor, grantee, uh, and optionally we all we can also have a message type URL so that uh, we'll get the list of grants uh, with that message type only. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Um, so that was it for the high level overview of um, the X fee grants and XLZ modules. Um, so yeah, in this second part, we'll we'll actually use them to create to use like like to to have them use uh, for a concrete use case for improving UX, and that's uh, what we call stash and controller accounts. Um, like if if you come from Po probably the Polkadot world, you might have already heard like the stash and controller accounts. This vocabulary is taken from there. Um, as I said, I previously previously worked on Polkadot, and I thought that this was like a good um, idea and a good like UX for managing um, uh, staking operations. And I was thinking like you know how to bring this into uh, the Cosmos world and uh, fee grants and Aussie like is a good solution, and we'll we'll see why. So first, let's understand like the problem that session control accounts is solving. Um, the idea is that um, like in you know with with proof of stake, we often have a list of validators, and as delegators, as most you know most people, most token holders, most atom holders are, we are or other chain holders are, we are just um, you know gonna delegate, not validate. And to delegate, we might choose like a validator and and delegate for that validator for a long time. But other people uh, actually often like to change um, and redelegate often, and and you know do research and, and choose the, the right validators with um, you know with the most uh, rewards or the most um, um, like the less risks. So I think um, staking operations is not like a one-time thing, but uh, but a continuous and regular operation. And if you want to redelegate often, currently. What most people do, I see like basically two types of um, main um, UX. The first one is hardware.
each with its own characteristic. And uh, the stash will allow the controller to perform a restricted set of operations. Here, we're thinking like staking operations. That's the, um, the scope of what we're presenting today. Um, so the controller can perform um, delegation or re-delegation or undelegation on behalf of stash. But uh, the controller cannot do anything like else on, on, the, on behalf of stash. Like the controller will never be able to move the funds uh, of the stash wallet to another wallet. Or uh, the controller would not be able here, in our case, to, to vote. Uh, we can decide yes or no to allow the stash, uh, to allow the controller to vote on behalf of stash. Um, these are all things that we can tweak. But like for the purpose of today's workshop, we'll just think that stash will only allow um, yeah, delegation, redelegation, and undelegation to the controller accounts. So how we, would we do that? Um, obviously, with LC and Figrant, since we're presenting these two uh, modules for, for a better UX. Um, so concretely, Stash will grant controller on-chain. This will be like an on-chain authorization of, of LC. Um, so it will be three authorizations. As, as we said, one authorization corresponds to one message. There will be three authorizations to the three um, um, yeah, to the three messages that you, that I mentioned before, um, but there's another problem is that like you know, uh, and this is like a, a small problem in in the Polkadot world where where the controller account still needs to hold a little bit of funds um, to pay for the fees when sending like you know these messages. That's why here in our workshop we'll add another um, uh, like another allowance this time from from fee grants and. Um, yeah, in this case, like you know, we'll say that whenever a controller wants to send um, a, a transaction uh, on behalf of Stash, then controller can use the Stash uh, funds to pay for fees. Um, and yeah, so in this case, like you would have Stash well hidden, pretty safe with um, all your all your uh, atoms or all your tokens from your chain, and on the, like a browser um, extension or some or a mobile wallet with some better UX. Uh, you would have the controller account, the controller keys, and with this better UX, you can perform um, regular staking operations and change the validators that you want to uh, delegate for. And uh, and yeah, so RC and fee grants in this case, you know, they can be used separately, but in this case, um, when they're used together, um, like in our opinion, it provides a good a good mix uh, of UX plus security. It has the security of the cold wallet um, um, because it's like um, yeah hidden in the stash and a good UX from the controller to be able to to use um, yeah the a specific set of restrictive powers. There are of course some risks um, and the risks, uh, especially on the controller side, is that uh, your controller account gets hacked. Um, hopefully, if that happens, your controller first of all cannot perform much thing. It can only like do the three messages that were here. Um, but yeah, but obviously you can say redelegate to a malicious validator and get slashed. That's of course a potential risk. Um, but also in like uh, like in most cases, in most hopeful cases, uh, the stash controller would um, be aware of this and then revoke the authorization whenever uh, the stash account is aware of this. Uh, security breach. Um, cool. In this case, let's um, maybe go into the demo uh, time of Stash and controller accounts. So Likita will be sharing her screen and going through um, the creation of the Stash and, and controller accounts and how it interacts with the RFZ and Figrant modules. Um, you can follow along uh, with this uh -huh, GitHub just... link. Perfect, and I think I'll let you present in this case. I'll stop presenting. Yeah, sure. So, can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, yes, uh, yeah. So we'll have two scripts for the demo. Uh, one is for running the road uh, node, uh, and uh, one is, uh, one other is for uh, setting up the station controller accounts and performing the transactions. So I have already cloned the repo uh, as I have pasted in the chat. So you just need to clone the repo, and uh, we'll be starting with your first step. So I have already cloned the repo and kept it on the desktop. 
so i'll be changing my directory to there so we'll be performing our steps from here so i have this uh, script to uh, script hack item node uh, to set up the local node so i'll be starting with that so firstly uh, we need to clone the uh, sdk repo cosmos sdk repo uh, which i have already uh, done and kept it here so you can see that here in step one i have a clone repo of cosmos sdk and then i have also performed the make build uh, which is the second step so it builds the sdk binary simac uh, simd so i have already done that so it build, uh, it um, creates a simd binary in the build file so that was done and then uh, we just need to follow from here so we'll be setting up the environmental variables um, so these are there so our config directory will be the cmap uh, which uh, which i have kept in my uh, home folder and then my build command will be the binary which we have built uh, just now that the, that is simd and our validator will be allies and then chain id will be hackatom6 uh, chain and uh, we just need to remove uh, any previous installations of our config directory so i'll be doing that and now we'll be creating our validator key allies now so yeah, the name is Alice and the uh, now key got created and we'll be storing its address in valid address variable. So we have got our validator address. So we can see that here. And now we'll be initializing of steps for initializing the chain. So yeah, our chain got initialized. And uh, first we need to add a Genesis account uh, with some thousand million stake with our validator address. And then we'll need to perform a Genesis transaction of some 100 million stakes. So our transaction will be returned to the config files, uh, Genesis files in the config folder. And now we need to collect all the Genesis transactions. So I collected all my transactions and now we just need to start our chain with a minimum gas price. So I have set a minimum gas price of point some value. And you can see that our chain got started uh, and height is one. So we are done with setting up our local node. So we'll be starting with um, step two. So in step two, we'll be setting up the accounts for the stash and controller. You can see here. So this is the script for that. So again, we need to set up our env variables. So I have done with our env variables and uh, these were the same as the previous ones. And I, I, I added the minimum, minimum fees of 20 stake, uh, which we'll be using in our transactions. And we need to create our stash and controller accounts now. So the stash will be the stash key and controller will be our controller key and uh, we'll also store our validator address um, since uh, we need to use that in our uh, performing transactions later so this is our validator address so yeah and now we'll start with creating this stash account uh, our account got created and now we'll be storing it at the, uh, its address in stash address likewise we'll be doing that for controller as well so I, con I created my controller account and I'll be storing my controller address here in the controller address variable. And now uh, I need to have funds to my stash account. So I'll be sending that from my validator. So I sent like some uh, 10 million stake. So the code is zero. So the transaction is successful. Uh, now uh, we'll be performing uh, authorizations, uh, granting authorizations to from the stash to the controller. So I'll be giving uh, three authorizations, which will be message delegate, uh, redelegate, and unborn. So this is uh, this is delegate transaction. So the code got zero, and so the transaction is successful. And like this, we'll be performing for message unborn. So we'll, uh, we are giving authorization to unborn for the controller address. Likewise, for the message to delegate. So yeah, this also got successful. So we'll be querying for all the grants now. Uh, we have two grants, as I had said earlier, uh, we can query using the query grantor grants and the grants. 
so i'm i'm using grantor can so i need to give the grantor address so grantor will be the stash in this case so i have got the three messages uh, through three authorization types which were delegate to delegate and non delegate and likewise uh, we can also query this using the query grants so in here we'll be giving both the stash address and the controller address so the controller uh, the authorizations for the controller address will be given here and now we'll be setting up a fee grant so i'll be setting up a fee grant of 200 stake so the controller can access up to 200 from the account of stash so the code is zero it is successful now so we'll be querying this now so i need to get 200 stake so as, we, as i said uh, we got 200 stake now so we'll be querying all the grants from the controller account so this is the second type to query this so yeah i got 200 again uh, now we'll be performing uh, a staking so we'll be staking the 42 uh, tokens and we'll be uh, copying the message to the some json file so you can see um, the output from this command has uh, I, I have stored it in the json so the message is here so we'll try to execute this message using the authorization given to the controller account so we'll be performing using the controller account so I was trying to execute this transaction, which is in tx.json from the controller. So we got code zero and the transaction is successful now. And uh, since that we used, uh, we have set minimum, fees to, uh, minimum fees to 20 stake. Um, now, if we query the fee grant, we need to have 200 minus 20, which will be 180. So it's done. And now we'll be querying for the delegations from the stash account. Uh, since but since that we delegated 42 we need to have 42 stake here delegations so yeah we got 42 and now uh, we need to rework all the delegations now uh, in order to see that um, if we uh, if we rework all the delegations we couldn't perform the authorizations given to the grantee so the code got zero so we have successfully revoked the message delegate transaction and now uh, we'll query the grants again so that we need to get only the message redelegate and unbound. So we got message redelegate and undelegate since we have revoked the delegate uh, authorization type. So let's revoke all the other author authorizations as well. So I'll be revoking message redelegate. And then we have got code zero. So the transaction is successful. And now I'll be revoking the messages undelegate and redelegate as well so yeah redelegate oh i have already done this it should be undelegate so yeah code zero now we'll be querying all the grants again so the grant should be null since we have revoked all the grants so we have got the grants null so controller no longer has access to the any any authorizations uh, to perform uh, on behalf of stash address so again i'll try to delegate using the controller address so i need to have an error like it is unauthorized so i'm trying to error yeah you can see the raw log here so it says that authorization not found it is unauthorized so we will not be able to perform the authorization anymore since that um, it has no authorizations to the stash account so yeah it's quite easy yeah that will be the presentation uh, that will be the demo yeah cool um yeah it sounds good i'll click back in this case the screen sharing all right i'm not sure present Cool, so that was the demo from uh, Likita. Thanks a lot for that. And just like an, a small addition is that, um, so this demo is like the exact comments are on, on GitHub, but it's um, available to anyone who adds both the Oxy and the Figurant module to their own chain. And, uh, you know, adding the, those two modules is as simple as putting like those two, importing those two modules inside your app.co and wiring up um, the correct app dependencies. Um, 
so so I think it's uh, and of course you can obviously use um, either one of them separately, but uh, as we sh as we shown before, it's quite useful to use them together, um, and uh, and yeah, and start to play around with these uh, authorizations, um, how to use them. Um, the stash and controller is a simple example that we try to show the usefulness in terms of UX um, for for um, for these two modules. But uh, I'm sure there are tons of other applications uh, that you can build on top of these two modules together um, for key management and, and other other applications. And uh, just like your yeah, final notes about uh, key management, we're actually building like. In our in our proposal initial proposal for uh, better key management for the Cosmos SDK, there were actually like three components. Um, so the first one was fee grant, which is for a sub account to be able to pay the fees from a, a root account. The second one is off Z, which is um, to perform a restricted set of uh, messages, and the third one is actually called the groups module, um, which is still under the works and it's still not like uh, released yet. But the idea is that you would, um, like a simple way to explain it would be to have an on-chain multi-sig where you can change the number of members. You can have some voting uh, policy, some decision policy between this uh, group where um, you know a certain threshold to vote on some proposal for some message to be executed. Um, so it's kind of like a small mini organization that will be on-chain, um, which would have like, you know, uh, like a common um, decision policy to to execute a set of messages. Um, so in our um, yeah in our mind, these three modules together provide a lot of use cases for uh, on-chain key management. Um, and uh, and yeah, so follow along the Cosmos SDK if you want to learn more about the groups module. It's uh, it will most likely be released in the next uh, release 045. Um, Cool, that was it from our side. Um, thanks a lot for listening to this workshop. So again, we put our um, our contacts below. Uh, we're most likely on Discord, uh, but you can also find us on GitHub or um, on email, we'll also answer. Um, thanks a lot. Do you have any questions? I'm going to go back here and stop sharing. Yep, as Valley wrote, you can also um, pose your question in the chat box. All right, could you post the wrap in here for instructions? Yep, um, I'll copy paste that again. It's uh, this one.
yeah, like I would love to see support for from wallets uh, for Aussie and fee grants um, and stuff. And uh, yeah, maybe it's not going to be a, a wallet uh, itself, but maybe like a DAP, could, like a, you know, like a staking DAP, um, which could also support this feature, um, like you know, communicating with a wallet for signing messages. Anyone else has questions? The RFC can be used with any SDK message. Yep, that's correct. If if you grant, if the Ruse account grants something to the sub account, this something in the middle can be any SDK message. Um, yeah. It seems like there's no more questions. Uh, Vale, should we stop here or wait a bit more? Yeah, but exactly. That's a good point. We're, we're like super present on Discord too. So feel free to send us any other further questions uh, with our contacts. Thanks. Thanks a lot then, everyone for attending this workshop. Yep, thanks everyone. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye.